Hello, my name is Jacqueline Poliff, and today I wanted to talk about moving pedals and building that skill through repertoire. Many students find moving pedals to be a bit of an intimidating skill, but like all others, it's one that can be improved through focus practice. So for today, I've selected six pieces. Um, all of them, of course, <laughs> are for the pedal harp. The first one is quite simple in terms of pedal changes and from there they become incrementally more difficult. It was actually quite hard to limit myself to only six pieces <laughs> as there are so many pieces out there that have different challenges for moving pedals. But I did want to keep this video to a somewhat reasonable length so I stuck with just six. Um, what I'll do is I'll talk through each piece a bit and then I'll demonstrate a portion of it. And for those demonstrations, I'll do a split screen so that you'll be able to see both my hands and my feet at the same time. Um, along the way, I'll talk about some tips and tricks for moving pedals. But for this video, I am assuming that you have a general knowledge of how the pedals work and some uh, basic knowledge of the motions needed for moving pedals. If you're brand new to pedals and you've never moved one before, I have a couple of videos that uh, go over all of that kind of from square one. So I'll put some links to those below in the description. And um, my hope for this video is that you'll be able to see the progression of pedal skills and kind of find yourself, see where you are <laughs> along that progression, and then also get some new ideas for repertoire. I wanted to start by looking at Rue by Alphonse Osselman from Trois Petites Pièces Facile. This is a simple piece in terms of pedal changes. It's written at an early intermediate level, and I think it's a great choice for someone who's just beginning to play the pedal harp and maybe hasn't moved any pedals before. I'm going to play the first section, and in that section the only pedals to move are the D and the F pedals. That works out really well because you can just have your left foot set up on D, your right foot set up on F, and then all they're doing is moving back and forth between sharp and natural. Anytime you're changing a pedal, uh, the timing of that change is important when exactly you're going to move the pedal. And um, whenever I'm playing, I'm always thinking about how that change compares to what I'm playing. For example, the second change in this piece is an F sharp. So as I'm preparing to move that F pedal, I'm thinking both about the last time I played the F string in natural and about when I'm going to need to play an F string in sharp. Um, and if you think this way, that kind of gives you a window <laughs> for when to move your pedal. In Rue, in keeping with this being a fairly simple piece for pedal changes, the windows are pretty large. There's a lot of time, a bit of a buffer uh, for when to get your pedal moved. But as pedal changes become more complex, that timing becomes really precise. And a bit later on today, we'll look at um, a piece that has extremely precise pedals in terms of timing. So here we go. First, I'm going to move all of the pedals into their starting positions. Uh, for Rue, that is a D sharp and a G sharp with everything else in natural. And then I'll set my feet up on the D and F pedals because those are the two that are going to be moving. One important aspect of pedal changes is keeping nice quiet feet so that you don't have any undesirable noises coming from the pedals themselves. And this can be applied to a piece of any level. Uh, it's a great thing to think about right from the start from your very first pedal changes. I think there are two aspects to it. Uh, one is having really good control over the pedals so that they don't slip or bounce around. Um, and the other is thinking about the the shape of the motion that you're making. So for example, if we take the C pedal here, right now the C pedal is in flat, and I'm going to move it to natural by coming straight down and then tucking it in. 
and then I'll go from natural to sharp doing the same thing bringing it straight down and tucking it in so that it's really matching the wooden shape of the harp the uh, outline for the different pedal notches and then to go back if I start in sharp to go up to natural I would first come out and then up and then do the same thing again to go from natural to flat coming out and then up and uh, that's a great way to keep your pedal changes nice and quiet. Next, I wanted to look at J.S. Bach's Prelude in C Major from the Well-Tempered Clavier, Book One. And this is my own transcription. Uh, throughout it, I've re-spelled a couple of notes enharmonically, and I've also provided the pedal markings. So in this piece, everything that we were just talking about with the Rue kind of is taken up a notch, uh, for one thing. There are more of a variety of pedal changes, so six of the seven pedals move during this piece, which is great practice for finding all of those pedals. Um, also, the pedals move between all three positions, flat, natural, and sharp. And then as far as the pace goes, there are some sections that are relatively quiet in terms of pedal changes, and others where you just have a bit more of a concentration of changes. Um, a couple of the pedals are fairly precise in terms of timing, needing to get them moved right at a particular moment rather than at a window of time. Uh, one thing I find with students, especially if they've played a lot of lever harp before the pedal harp, is that sometimes they just forget to move their pedals. So they'll be playing along beautifully and then all of a sudden something will sound strange and they'll realize that they didn't move a pedal when they were supposed to. Um, so if this is happening, a great way to practice is to play and to actually say your pedals out loud because that will force you to think about the pedals sort of in the forefront of your mind rather than relegating it to the back where it might get overlooked. I'm going to go ahead and play a section from the middle of this piece and as I play I'll say my pedals out loud so you can see how that would work. natural, C and A sharp, A natural, A flat, C natural, A natural. Next we have a piece written by one of J.S. Bach's sons, so we're moving right along in the family. Uh, this is Safalgento, written by Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach, and he wrote it for the piano, but there are a few different transcriptions for harp. And the one that I'm looking at today was done by Dominique Piana, and I'm not quite sure if I'm saying her last name properly, so if not, I apologize. <laughs> um, anyway, like the Bach prelude that I just played, I'd say this is written at an intermediate level for the harp. And it's known for this section towards the end of the piece with kind of a lot of pedal changes. In this section, there is a pedal change, or even two, one in each foot, um, every two beats. So obviously this is a quicker pace of pedal changes than the music that we've looked at so far. And of course, there are still the other things to think about as well, thinking about keeping your pedals nice and quiet, uh, thinking about timing them properly in terms of the strings, all of that. I would say one of the biggest challenges that comes up for students with this piece is moving a pedal and then moving their foot directly to the next pedal that's needed. So many times I find that people are fine with their pedal changes if their foot is ready and waiting on the proper pedal, but uh, if it's not there, <laughs> then there's kind of a hiccup or a moment of hesitation Will they quick try to get their foot into position and then move the pedal. So I think to play this section successfully, you really need to move the pedal and then immediately get your foot set up for the next pedal. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the pedals alone without playing anything at the same time. And that way I'll be able to really focus on moving the pedal and then moving my foot to the next pedal. And this can be a great first step for any tricky section of pedals. Um, one thing to keep in mind, I think, is to try and do this really rhythmically and the same tempo that you would play the piece. So here we go. And 
Now I'll go ahead and play the passage uh, with my fingers and my feet both, um, still focusing on the same thing, trying to move a pedal and then move the foot right to the next pedal. If you need an intermediate step between the two, uh, a great one would be to just play one hand with your pedals. In this piece, I think the left hand would work well. So you could do your left hand alone plus your pedals, and then you could move on to what I'm about to do now, playing both hands with the pedals. At this point, I wanted to take a look at an orchestral excerpt. This is Scheherazade, written by Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov. And the portion that we're going to look at comes from the end of the second movement at rehearsal letter Q. This is a lovely exposed passage for the harp, where the harp is accompanying the flute. And it's difficult in terms of pedals uh, for two reasons. One is the pace of the pedals is quite quick. <laughs> There's just a lot of pedals that need to be moved. And secondly, uh, there are some big challenges with the timing of the pedals. Let's take the first two chords of this passage as an example. In the first chord, you're playing a D natural, and in the second chord, you're playing a D sharp. So in between those two chords, you need to move your pedal at a very precise moment. Um, if you were to move the pedal too soon, you can actually hear the resonance change between chords. So of course we want to avoid that. And um, if you were to move your pedal too late, you frequently end up with a buzz or a twang on the second chord uh, if the pedal is still moving into position as you're playing that chord. So instead, I think what you want to do is to think about a three-step process. So after you play your first chord, the first step is to set your fingers up on the second chord. Then step two is to move the pedal. And then step three is to play the chord. If you already have your fingers set up on that second chord, then you're muffling the string that's changing and that keeps your sound really clean. So all you have to do is kind of uh, make those three steps more compact so they happen in really quick succession and that keeps the sound nice and clean. And this principle applies to all kinds of music at all different levels. If you're working on your pedals and you can hear the sound changing in your strings, frequently the most straightforward way to fix that is to just think about when you're placing for the, the thing that comes next versus when you're moving your pedal. Now I'm going to go ahead and play the full passage. And as I play, I'm going to focus on the timing. So when I'm moving the pedals compared to when I'm placing each chord. Next, I wanted to play an excerpt from Richard Wagner's opera, The Valkyrie. Uh, this portion is known as the magic fire music. And for harpists everywhere, the magic fire music section is known for all of the pedals that it contains. Uh, there are a few things that are difficult about these pedals. One is the sheer pace of the pedals. Uh, there are a lot of pedals smashed into this. Um, also, the pedals are moving in all kinds of different combinations and motions between the feet. And then I think one of the biggest challenges is to um, kind of keep a sense of calmness in the feet. <laughs> a lot of times if you have a passage that feels a bit frantic, I think that emotion can get translated down into your feet and you might find yourself stomping around a bit more aggressively than you would normally do with a slower pedal change. And that of course can translate into some added noise from the pedals and the feet. So it's a difficult thing to do to feel like you're playing this exciting passage and moving really quickly but that your feet are moving just as deliberately as ever, you know, just carefully sliding over to the next pedal, moving it out and up um, with a very sort of deliberate focus. I'm going to play a short section from the middle of the Magic Fire music where the pedals are at their most dense. And I should mention that there's a few different versions of this harp part out there. 
Uh, one of the most popular of these versions was done by Carlos Salzedo. But what I'm going to play today is my own enharmonic respelling of the um, Wagner's original first heart part. So everything will sound exactly as Wagner intended it, but I'll play some of the pitches on different strings to make for smoother pedals. Um, I find that in a lot of the versions, the pedals move at the pace of an eighth note, um, and that's a bit fast for this particular part. So I've worked out an enharmonic version where the pedals move at the pace of a quarter note. For our final piece today, we have Divertissement à l'Espagnol by André Caplet. Caplet was a student of Claude Debussy's. He wrote a few different things for harp, and in this piece, he was clearly very excited by the pedals of the harp and their capabilities. So uh, one thing he does that's quite interesting is he uses an extended technique called a pedal slide. Now normally this is that sound that you want to avoid, and we were talking about it in Scheherazade. Uh, so it's the opposite of what you usually do. With a pedal slide, you play the string, then move the pedal while it's ringing, and you hear very clearly the half step change. So he uses that technique all over the place in this piece. Um, and like the Wagner that we were just looking at, I would say this piece is written at an advanced level. And in terms of difficulty of pedals, it kind of has everything. <laughs> there are spots where the pace of pedals are very quick. Uh, there are a lot of different motions you have to make with the pedals. You have to be extremely precise about when you move them because they're creating uh, a lot of the rhythm in the piece. And at the same time that you do all of that, of course, you want to be quiet with your feet and not have any extra noise. I'll play a section from the beginning of the piece. It'll have a lot of different pedal changes, but especially a lot of pedal slides. I hope this video has given you some insight into moving pedals and maybe some new approaches for working on those skills, along with possibly some ideas for repertoire to do so. I also wanted to mention that, as I'm sure many of you know, I have a book of pedal exercises I've written. It is titled, cleverly, uh, Pedal Exercises for the Harp, and um, it contains 40 exercises. They are all incremental, so they start very simply and become increasingly complex. Uh, one thing I particularly like about it in working with students is that it covers all of the different combinations of movements um, really thoroughly. So I find that when students have worked through such exercises, then when it comes to pieces with a lot of pedal changes, uh, their feet are in good shape to do all of that, and they're able to think about the, the many different things with what they're playing and how they're moving and everything uh, all at the same time a bit easier. So I'll put a link to that book uh, below in the description for those who are interested. Thanks so much for watching and good luck with your pedal changes.